Hey, what up, what up, what up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and this is a special version of Speak On It. I'm gonna have multiple guests, but right now, right here, right here with me, to my left, I have my homie, E. Cool. Number one, I'm the dad, I be the best for this anger. I see now what I'm gonna do, like ya. And together, we are going to do Speak On It. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> so, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm definitely feeling good. You look like you're feeling good. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I wanted to do something special because I just felt like it was important to have like a discussion about SARS. Now here it is, you know, I'm American. I was born here, raised here. Mm. But, you know, 2020, just like we just, we were discussing before the camera came on, 2020 has gone crazy just for the world, period. All the way left. All the way left. And I feel like, especially here in the United States, it went crazy with social unrest, with Black Lives Matter. I'm tired. I'm tired of pain. Pain you feel when you watch something like that. When you watch your big brother, who you looked up to for your whole life, die, die begging for his mom. I'm here to ask you to make it stop. My son, Ace, who's four, was a policeman on career day. And so when my husband was trying to explain to him, you know, what was going on and why everybody was so upset and what was happening with the police, Ace was confused. He was like, so the police are the bad guys? Yeah. And everybody around the world kind of like joined together to stand with us. And it meant a lot for us here in the States. But right now, Nigeria is going through something that a lot of us here we don't know or understand but i want us to understand okay. i want us to stand with you guys the same way you guys stood with us and so i know you were speaking out a lot about it and that's why i invited you to come here to kind of educate me <laughs> and a lot of people no that problem. follow me and my platform and, and it's not just you, but um, we actually have a lot of guests that are going to... Speak on it. Yeah, they all okay. speaking on it. <laughs> okay. And so we are gonna be dropping them in into speak on it on this um, video, but right here, you and I are here together. I just kinda want you to kinda like talk to me, help me understand, let okay. me know what is SARS? Okay, so SARS is a special unit that was created by is a special unit of the police force in Nigeria, mm -hmm. special anti-robbery unit. SARS, which is meant to be a special anti-robbery squad of the police, is a section that is meant to be protecting Nigerians. To actually help stop and detect armed robbery. Armed robbery. Yes. So it's like the police, but it's in Nigeria. Yes. The reason why they started SARS was to end crime and the way they are stopping the youth and you know just making life uncomfortable for us has nothing to do with why SARS was established. They were created to protect the citizens of Nigeria because a lot of times when you have robbery cases you need aid immediately so it was they were created specifically for that. After being created it was they started going left. There was police oppression, police brutality, they started actually robbing some people. So they started basically taking advantage of their power. Exactly. Same thing that's happening here. Happening here. Hi Candy, thank you for having me. My name is Polan Nino Lowo, popularly called Nino. I am an actor and I currently live in Nigeria. I will say traumatically, you know, um, especially with the recent events um, that happened during the protest where um, peaceful protesters were, were shot and killed. The situation with SARS has been psychologically painful. You know, we live in fear pretty much. And that's what we were fighting for. You can imagine going out and um, being harassed and assaulted or even shot at, you know, by the same people who are put there to protect you and fight crimes. I mean, the SARS, um, the meaning of SARS is um, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, which has been put together to battle crime and, and protect the, the, the people of Nigeria. And however, 
because it seems now that the, that the same exact people who were were scared of. You know, you can imagine a mother losing losing a child to a SARS official, or, or brothers and sisters losing their loved ones. It's 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 devastating. It's it's totally inhumane. So the fear that that puts in us is just it's just devastating. You know, I, I'm a father. You know, I have I have um, two kids, and I can imagine going out every day trying to provide for my family and I, you know and I'm scared of you know being being stopped by the SARS officials and, and harassed and you never know what's gonna happen and you know you don't even know if you're gonna come back home um, that's why we had the, the protests a couple of weeks ago and the situation is just very devastating for us and that's that's exactly how we feel right now if they can't put this nation in order let them step aside let you take over and put this nation in order. I understand that you know all all around the world there is police brutality or you know police oppression mm -hmm. and things, police issues. But in Nigeria, it's a little worse because now they take the matters into their own hands and a, a lot they don't even let you hold, have a carry a gun mm. as a regular civilian. Here, people you know people can get protected here and there. You can have your license and have your own gun. Certain, certain well, places, in certain states, certain states, mm -hmm. certain places. But I'm saying in America as a whole, it's it's legal certain places, mm -hmm. but these people in Nigeria are actually very powerless. They don't have a contact to call if there's a problem, if there's an issue. What do you want to call the police? There's no 911. SARS, formed in 1984, has been accused of a wide range of brutality, including extortion, torture, and murder. A lot of reach. They don't even know how to really reach. So it's really like the regular another civilian who can really come to your aid. So it's, it's really tough. It's way tougher than how Americans see it. So is this like a well-known thing that's happening there? Like, is it talked about a lot? It's the main topic in the country, the whole country, where from the, the rich to the poor to the middle class. Like, it's a very, very big issue. Hi there. Uh, my name is Kathy. I am a Nigerian multiple award-winning dancer, choreographer, and fitness coach. I am, I am also a great advocate of youth empowerment. I am currently living in Nigeria. Thank you, Candy, for having me. My experience has been multiple because I, my company, which is a dance company in Nigeria, um, I have a lot of young people that work with me, especially on different jobs and locations and all of that. So apart from my personal experience where I was um, picked up on the road, escorting a friend, uh, or just seeing a friend off at the bus stop, and the next thing the bus pulls over and boom, we're all in there and the next thing we're at the police station and the next thing it's like, you know, being extorted and all of that and I was there like till the next morning. I was there from like 9 p.m. till like 5 a.m. in the morning and I didn't have any money on me so at the end I was let go in, in the morning but a lot of people that was also brought in that particular day uh, were not that lucky. It was whatever they had that they had, they had to give. This is something that it's, it's pretty much almost like a norm. You just pray not to be on the side where they get trigger happy or you get into that situation where you can't even contact family and friends to help bail you. And uh, that is where it even became bigger for me because the more I engaged with young people, the more I had situations where I had to bail them out or I had to make calls to help get some of the young boys that dance in my company you know, out of um, a police custody because they were picked up at random you know for different offenses that they did not commit mostly because they were walking on the street or they had a laptop or they had dreads or they had tattoos it was one of the things so i had to bail a lot of uh, young people out from my company because we are into entertainment so we are like easy target when it comes to the looks that they use as um for, to profile you so basically that that has been it until you know recently it really became um, an outrage uh, where you hear of somebody dying in the hands of the special forces. The Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, says he's alarmed by widespread reports of civilian deaths in Nigeria and called for an end to the violence. The government really is ignoring it, saying it didn't happen. Like, how, like if, if, if not for social media, as it is now, mm -hmm. the government could have really hidden a whole lot under the table. You wouldn't know because there's certain things they don't, they don't do. There was, there's been a series of like killings, mm -hmm. but there was one particular situation that set the tone out for the major spread of the news. A particular video that went viral where a young guy was being chased in his car 
and I think that now led to um, the protest happening. Because entertainment really is like the biggest platform mm -hmm. for Nigeria, so it was only through entertainment that we were able to shine light on what was going on. This, I think this is the most important point. Justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families. Increase police salary so that they are adequately compensated for protecting lives and property of citizens. I've never been involved in politics or anything, but I just know that, again, it's like how you're doing. I'm using my platform to make things heard stateside and back home or with, within Africa. I personally have been in the situation with my friend and manager also back in Nigeria. And it was it was it was crazy. If if I didn't get out the car at, before I became equal and then now I'm equal is a little it's a little different. But at that point I just imagine putting myself in a situation as a regular mm -hmm. Nigerian that doesn't have any kind of reach or and they go through hell on earth. The people that's supposed to protect us is like killing. It's crazy. You have been very vocal in the Atlanta protests. Yes. And I want to know, what is the main thing that you want people here to know and all, all around the world to know? Okay, so one of the reasons why we, we decided to march with the stand in solidarity with people in Nigeria was because obviously we know that if once we start to talk here, we have easier access to like getting, foreign, one of the protests was like, was at CNN Center. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, when you make noise in media, a lot of the funny things in media actually responds to negative news a lot. <laughs> It's, it's, crazy. it's crazy, but like you reach out and then until it gets like negative, then they start to respond. So, but the main idea was to try to get the whole world to be attention and see if we can get some kind of outside help, maybe the UN, International Affairs, mm -hmm. ICC, or some somebody who would just to get involved and to find a way to maybe call call up on the president. You guys are trying to reach the president the of, press. of Nigeria. We're trying to actually make him accountable for what has been happening. So basically, with the killings, the recent killings in, in Nigeria, like from police force and all, like we expected the president to come and really say something and actually, you know, if you, you, you kill, you get charged. Right. It's not two ways about it. The president didn't say nothing about it. Instead, they were trying to hide it under the rug, saying there were no ca casualties. Mm. What do you mean? There's so many videos out there. Is it, I mean, this is social media. You can't hide it. You know, if this happens and that happens, then people were live. Actually, there was one of my friends that was actually live at one of the shootings in Nigeria. We call it the Lekki massacre because it was at the toll gate when they're protesting. Airport shut down. Protesters blocked the entrance to international departures on Monday night. Undeterred, however, activists have continued in their efforts. And she went live and David O shared it up and so many other people shared shared the information and they were tuned in. 300,000 people live that particular day when it was happening. Somebody had been shot mm -hmm. and she was trying to help get the bullet out of the leg locally. It's very bad because um, again, America, you get shot, you get sent to the hospital, they can emergency treat you, but uh, so many things you could, there's reach. Mm -hmm. But for Nigeria and most of Africa, there's none. It's terrible. And some places you go to, they say they can't treat you because they don't have something to treat you. It's, 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 it's way more than America. I understand that, you know, everyone goes through police brutality and the rest of it, but like so many things are needed back home that they don't have at all. Listen to me, my brother was slaughtered in this protest. I cannot leave any of my members anymore. Why should SARS be ended? Because they aren't protecting us. We have to see these people die and we'll come back next month. They're not coming back. I don't die, don't die, go finish. Hello, Candy. Thank you for having me. My name is Adenike Adelike, as known as Nikos Baby. I am half Nigerian, half American. I was raised in Nigeria, and Nigeria definitely has a special place in my heart. And everything that has been going on is so heartbreaking and this is why I came on here because I wanted to use my voice to bring a little bit of awareness and talk about my country and my hopes for my country and also how proud I am of my country. Um, recently, as you guys know, this NSARS movement has been happening and me being from America and also from Nigeria, I have got to experience you know, my experiences with the American police and the Nigerian police and, you know, the people that are supposed to protect us. And I've always had questions from a little girl, why, like while living in Nigeria, you know, why are we able to 
give the police money and when they stop us to leave us alone and you know why do we feel intimidated by the police and why don't we feel safe around the police you know what i'm saying this is something that really hit home when i heard about it because we all know that this has been a big problem in nigeria and something that really made me proud was seeing the youth speak up about it and using their voice. Your voice has been heard. Stop on your for you. This is a new Nigeria. Stop on your for you. We are not scared to speak our mind. Stop on your for you. So I'm very happy that the youth spoke up and they got out and they protested. And I'm also happy about how we used our voice and social media was a platform for us to get the real news out and for us to build awareness about what is really going on in Nigeria. This is something that made me really proud. It was amazing to see a lot of big names from Beyonce to Candy to Diddy speaking on this and posting about it and really, you know, sharing because a lot Nigerians are everywhere and a lot of people love Nigerians. They eat our Nigerian food, they date Nigerian men, they love us for all these different things. So it was really amazing to see that they cared about us and they showed that. I always tell people I'm a solutions person. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to figure out, okay, well, how do we get solutions? Whether you're a government or not government, or whether you're a citizen or not, this is our land. We owe it to ourselves uh, as parents, as mothers, as fathers, as sisters, as brothers, to come together to start taking care of one another. and. By God's grace, I believe so much that Nigeria will get better. I believe so much in the people of the country because we are, we are dogged. We are like, we are like cockroaches. Like we don't die. We 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 thrive. We survive anywhere. And that's why, um, for me, I can't relent. Everything I do in my life with that is centered around giving hope, uh, letting people know that you know what. I'm a dancer, I broke a Guinness World Record, I have done great fits as a dancer, I've been honored greatly as a dancer. So if I can do that as a dancer, you can do that as a hairdresser, you can do that as a cobbler, you can do that as a bus driver, you know, you can be great with whatever you are or whoever you are. It's really about what you're doing with who you are. George Floyd was kind of like this generation's Rodney King. All around the world, you know, we try, we have these protests, mm -hmm. we meet, we, you know, we talk about it, but it's like, how do we get solutions? I feel like the, we have to ch be able to channel this energy into something that can really make a change. One thing that I will say that I would love to see in the future is I would love to see our government do better and take care of their people better and just show that they care and use our resources. I don't know if you guys know this, but Nigeria has a lot of great resources and this is why a lot of people love us because we can offer minerals like gold, coal, oil, and you know, it's, it's really something because for example, like Dubai is so ahead of its time. It's doing so great and it's a place for tourism because they have used their minerals so well. They care so much about their country. Everybody wants to go there because everything is enforced and they don't disrespect that. And their government uses their resources to take care of their people and to take care of their land. And we just want to see our government care about our people. We just really want to see improvement. Like I said, we need good leaders that's really going to have our back and make sure we have security, good security that's really here to protect us and good infrastructure. I feel like it's not going to be handed to us if we, as we've seen. We've seen that we have to fight because that's the only way they're gonna listen. What we've shown is that we are not taking no for an answer. We're tired, we're not living like this anymore. It's not enjoyable, it doesn't make us happy. Our people are angry. People are dying, people that we love, our brothers, our sisters, our boyfriends are dying, and it's so sad. When this shooting happened at the Lekki Tollgate, it was a horrible day for all of us. Even though I'm in America and I have work to do, I have a business to run, I couldn't think straight because my people were hurt. To be honest with you guys, I didn't know what I could do. That's why I'm happy I'm on this platform with all I can do is at least speak and bring awareness because it's really a, it's really a sad thing, and if you care about People in general, you should care about this because we're all one and we all have to care about each other and we have to bring awareness to the issues that's happening around the world. The first thing we need to understand is our rights and exercise them. 
most of the youth do not even know what their rights are. They don't even know that they, they have a right to vote and they could get a voter's card. So we need to let everybody know that as long as you're a citizen of this nation, you have a right to vote and you must exercise that vote. You know, we need to understand that we in part hold the power to elect the officials that represent us. Also, I'll, I'll expect um, to see more youths, you know, get involved, you know, in, in um, political decisions. You know, we, we need to run for office. We need to get involved in the entire process. We are the future of tomorrow, you know, and this people we put there are there to represent us. And But however, you know, we, it's not going down the way we want it. So we need to change that. We need to take responsibility. We need to go out there. We need to know that we can run for office ourselves, represent ourselves and, and, and do good for this nation. And come 2023, which is a, a, a election year, we, we will rise up, you know, and we will show Nigeria that we, we have a voice and we are woke. You know, we're up now and we will get what we, what we deserve and we will demand for our rights and we'll make sure we get them. If they gave us a fighting chance, I feel like we should create a, a new party where we want you to be accountable for the things that are happening in the country. What I'm understanding is that they're, they are actually listening. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been able to, they, it, it, once upon a time, nobody was gonna listen to anything I'd say, to be honest. Now that the international body, the big artists and everything else, that we're really like on it, mm -hmm. there's more attention than they can't really hide from, you know, what the internet is showing. Right. At least we know they're listening, mm -hmm. so they say, but mm -hmm. has anything been done so and so? No. I believe that as a people, we all need to come together and realize that as much as we want the government to to rise up and do things for us, there's a lot going on up there that I feel that we need to start taking responsibility for one another. We need to care about one another more, a lot more. For me, I'm an advocate for youth empowerment. Like I don't wait for my government before I do anything. I'm a dancer, but with dance, I've been able to empower a lot of young people in my environment like i am there to like my life is there to prove to people that look you don't have to be in power you don't have to be a billionaire a rich person you don't have to know anybody before you can matter in life before you can do something that is impactful to humanity so i believe to i believe strongly in service to humanity and that starts from the next person you see beside you. It starts from your neighbor, your friend, your family. So for me, I believe that the way forward for Nigeria is that now that we realize where we are, we realize what we're dealing with as a people, we need to start being deliberate about helping one another, especially the youth. Nigeria has a population of almost 200 million people and over 60% of that population are youths. And over 75% of that youth population are into the creative industry so it's a given why i'm using dance as a tool of reformation i'm using that as a tool for education and awareness i'm using dance to raise uh, money for health care for young people uh, a few months ago during the coronavirus lockdown we lost about four dancers and mostly to not getting uh, adequate health care or uh, immediate health care attention so so for me as individuals as citizens of the country i feel for those of us that has influence, for those of us that have an opportunity or have a platform, we need to start working for each other. And for me, that's the way forward. That's how we're going to have to fix the, com the country brick by brick. The youth is asking for change. So anything we can say and do is help and it's leading us in the right direction for a better future. So any little step, it's all gonna add up at the end. So anything you can do, even though you feel like it's small, let your voice be heard. Get out and do whatever you can do and let's try to make a change little by little. It's all love. Thank you, Candy, for allowing me to be on this amazing platform. It was such an honor and I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you for having me too. I appreciate you taking the time for talk, you know, to talk to me, I really do. I want to say thank you to all of my guests that joined in today. I appreciate you guys. You know what? I really needed this because I I have kind of been wondering what was going on. You know, I've been seeing the things online. I was trying to educate myself because I really, it was hurting me, the videos that I had seen. 
And, you know, now I feel like, you know, I've walked away with a better understanding. And I just really want us all to come together and do what we all can to make change. Please, 2020, let up. <laughs> let up. I just hope 2021, you know, changes some things. I would say the positive thing about 2020 is that it's definitely shined a light on the craziness that has happened. Yes. You know, it's just shown us that, you know, we can make change if we want to. True. That we can come together when we need to, to, um, you know, put our foot down and to put the pressure on them True. to make change. You know what I'm saying? But we got to apply pr a pressure and we got to keep putting the pressure down. You know yes. what I mean? Because yeah. pressure bursts pipes. And we got to remember that. You can't, you can't let up can't let up so um, we just got to stick with it and that's here in the states and in Nigeria yes we do